Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dissipation and scalar transport for mixture fraction Z. Okay. So, uh, we uh, remember that we did this for the reactive scalar and we found out the gradient transport assumption was not very good because that was a reactive scalar with source terms. But of course, mixture fraction is um, a passive scalar. So, we can use the gradient transport assumption and if we do that, what we will get is that if we use this assumption u double prime z prime for every average is equal to a turbulent diffusivity. Now, this is of course, not true, it is not ab initio, it is just a model from gradient transport assumption okay. and this is turbulent diffusivity. modeled in analogy with AD viscosity, whereas d t is equal to nu t by turbulent limit number nu t is the is the turbulent AD viscosity and this is a turbulent Schmidt number. Okay, then one can derive an equation of um, mean mixture fraction. Essentially, if you can derive an equation for the y's, you can essentially derive a mixture mean equation of mean mixture fraction. You can essentially derive an equation of mixture fraction. Then from that, you can essentially derive an equation of mean mixture fraction. Of course, here actually it can be shown that it is a conserved scalar. So essentially, all the source terms cancel out. That is the whole purpose of defining a mixture fraction that it is a conserved scalar. So, you got the temporal term, the convection by mean flow ok. So, this is just an equation of uh, 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 the uh, is mixture fraction is essentially another just another conserved scalar or a coupling function similar to that coupling function formulations that we did. Okay, but it is just in terms of the scalars or okay, in terms of y of y o 2 etcetera and essentially everything cancels out and we get left with these equations. Okay, so, this is the uh, transport this is the essentially the uh, uh, equation for mean mixture fraction. Okay, of course, here we have neglected the molecular mean molecular term because we considered the turbulent diffusion term to be much stronger than the mean molecular uh, molecular diffusion. But we can as we said before that it can be absorbed within this d t term also. Okay. Now, we also need an equation of z prime, we will see why. So, for that first we need to derive an equation of z, we need to derive an equation of the variance of z that is z prime square that is this thing. But first derive an equation for z double prime and that is given by this, we should derive this.
we have discussed these terms already is similar to this reactive scalar terms because it emerges from the reactive scalar itself but of course with this so without the source term. Okay. Now, uh, here of course, we have uh, if we uh, consider that this uh, rho d etcetera and their uh, mean uh, gradients are neglected for simplicity. So, uh, essentially the first two terms on the RHS can be co combined to obtain a term which is proportional to uh, this thing. Okay. And then by multiplying the whole thing by um, multiplying by twice rho z prime okay we can get an equation for z double prime square and then we uh, use the continuity uh, and average and then we get an equation for this uh, the favre average z prime uh, square okay this is once again as you have seen this is once again similar to the uh, kinetic energy uh, thing uh, because kinetic energy was essentially the uh, 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 the u prime that is a fluctuating uh, velocity squared uh, averaged okay so it's essentially this uh, the uh, the scalar counterpart of the kinetic energy turbulent kinetic energy okay so uh, now um, uh, essentially then uh, one what we can do is that uh, we can uh, 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 go with uh, with essentially uh, uh, these things mm, we can essentially uh, we can essentially go with uh, and derive that equation okay and that is given by that is equation of this is the transport equation for z prime square for ray averaged and that is given by transient term convective term I will describe these terms in a while. Please hold. Okay. So, now let us call this as T1, T2, and T3. Okay. So, uh, the left hand side, of course, this is the transient term and this is the convection of uh, the variance of z by the mean velocity that is u, uh, u, uh, u uh, Favre average. Okay. On the right hand side, you get these three terms, and this once again needs an explanation, just like the way we explained the previous uh, 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 previous reactive scalars. Okay, so T one is essentially a turbulent transport term. T two. You see once again this is similar to the Reynolds stress terms if it were in terms of velocity this is similar to the Reynolds stress terms and this is like the uh, the this is a tilde of course like the mean uh, velocity gradient. So, here you essentially have a flux of uh, the velocity uh, and uh, joint uh, uh, covariance of velocity fluctuation and scalar fluctuation mixture fraction fluctuations and that is supported uh, with this uh, mean uh, scale, uh, mixture fraction gradient. So, this causes essentially it can be shown that essentially uh, and uh, uh, this essentially causes the uh, the production of the z prime fluctuation. So, once you have these terms and uh, non zero once you have this term non zero this essentially increases acts as a source for uh, z prime fluctuations. Okay. This adds to the fluctuations and once again this will essentially be a dissipation term, but let us write this down this is essentially the mean uh, this is the production of 
scalar fluctuations okay and the once again here we have neglected the mean molecular transport term for simplicity uh, but of course we will see that the molecular diffusivity does not vanish and it arrives and it comes back in the uh, Favre averaged uh, scalar dissipation rate term that is which is this term. So, this is essentially chi tilde is essentially 2 d by the way here d essentially we have assumed that Lewis number equal to 1. So, d is essentially d i. So, thermal diffusivity equal to molecular diffusivity and uh, the diffusivity of all species are also equal. So, that assumption is there. Okay. So, this is the th term okay. grad z prime average times grad z prime average. Okay. Now, the integral scalar time scale you can use this. Uh, so, essentially in this term this is the convective this is a transient term, this is a convective term, this is a turbulent transport term, this is the um, uh, this is the uh, production term, this is the production term okay, and this is the dissipation term. Okay. So, uh, what the scalar fluctuations are produced by this presence of mean uh, mixture fraction gradients and uh, it is uh, destroyed or dissipated in the fine scales by this scalar dissipation red dry. So, that is the uh, mechanics uh, of uh, how scalar fluctuations are produced and dissipated. Okay. And one can be what can be shown also that is essentially it takes uh, essentially this uh, this uh, essentially takes the uh, the uh, large uh, scale uh, uh, large scale mixture fraction gradients and uh, then it uh, essentially creates this scalar uh, fluctuations uh, at large scales and essentially this will be dissipated at the small scales. Okay. So, once again here also you will see that there is a cascade of essentially scalar fluctuations. So, now the we can define an integral time scale using this as uh, Now, z is equal to z prime square over average dissipated by the scalar dissipation rate and tau the time scale is essentially tau k over average divided by mean dissipation rate turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate and those can be as you have seen before those can be connected through these things whereas this is often 2.0 but sometimes 3.0 the proportionality constant and using this one can write the scalar dissipation rate is essentially z x tilde times epsilon by k times z prime square. Okay. This is often called the scalar dissipation rate anomaly because you see that scalar dissipation rate is a small scale quantity, but uh, here you do not have any diffusivity essentially. Okay. So, it is essentially dependent only on the mean dissipation rate and the um, uh, turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate and the kinetic turbulent kinetic energy average and the uh, scalar fluctuation uh, and the variance of scalar fluctuations. Okay. So, uh, this is the, uh, the thing and then uh, we will use this uh, we have essentially de derived uh, what we have done here is that we have derived an equation for z we have derived the governing equation. or not derived we have just written down rather the governing equation, but we have shown you how the what are the steps to derive you should derive the, we, have derived, we have shown the steps to for the governing equations for z tilde and z prime uh, z prime square tilde. Okay. There is a mean mixture fraction Favre averaged mixture fraction and the uh, Favre variance of mixture fraction fluctuations. Okay, so, we have obtained this so, this is a very important step you will see why. Okay. Using this we can we can will show that we can essentially use the flame little model. Now, what is the flame little model? Now, the flame little models are basically we consider a full flame that is if we say consider a jet flame like this if we will uh, which is say air coming out air coming out. So, this is in a gas turbine combustor and you will have a um, this is a so this is a this is a flame. So, we will see we will consider that each of these are essentially 
of flamelets okay so this whole flame so these are essentially say temperature temperature like this so a whole of this flame okay so temperature goes down when you go away from the flame temperature goes down when you go away from the flame on this side also okay so you have the flame here so this whole big flame is essentially an ensemble of infinitely large number of flamelets okay so that is the idea of this flamelet model that the whole flame is essentially composed of many flamelets and flamelets are essentially thin reactive diffusive layers okay these are essentially thin reactive diffusive layers which are embedded in an otherwise non reacting turbulent flow field okay so the otherwise the flow field is non reacting so where you have got this flamelets and these are embedded in the non reacting flow field and the flamelet structure is justified if the thickness of the inner layer of the fuel consumption layer where the reaction layer happens which is essentially infinitesimal small in the fast reaction limit is much much smaller than the kolmogorov length scale so that the kolmogorov length scale does not disturb your inherent flamelet structure so inherent flame structure so our flamelet structure is justified only in that case okay so what we'll do is that this flamelet model is essentially a a combination of the of we'll see that is equation of z and z prime square that we have obtained and plus this one d chambered flame solutions that we obtained in the mixture fraction space okay so this coupled with this 1d laminar flame okay these are essentially our flamelets flamelet solutions and this gives rise to flamelet model okay so that is the whole idea behind this flamelet model so we'll see uh, essentially that the flamelet concept focus on the location of the flame surface and not reactive scalars in this flamelet concept will not in the there are essentially two versions of the flamelet model that we'll discuss in the first one we'll not even go to solve for the reactive scalars okay what we'll do is essentially solve for the mixture fraction the average we'll solve for the z and the z prime square okay we'll not even solve for the mixture fractions later we will do that we will not even solve for the uh, reactive scalars we will solve for the mixture fractions okay so the essentially first important thing is that essentially to find out the location of the flame surface and what is the location of the flame surface the zst the iso contour or the iso surface zst stoichiometric will be my location of the flame surface okay now this location is defined as the iso surface as we have said is the non reacting scalar quantity z and this non reacting scalar quantity z is a is a conserved scalar because it does not have any source term in the transport equation and the statistical moments of the reactive scalars will be obtained using the statistical distribution of the scalar z how we will obtain the statistical distribution of the z by the z prime and the z double prime square equations and then we have to obtain we have to find out somehow by which we can relate rai the reactive scalar as a function of z okay this can be either done through uh, some kind of a uh, like a model that is we assume that the solution of the 1d flame that we have done is valid everywhere okay and or the other way is to basically solve for rai as a function of z we will do both okay now but the other thing is that there is one more step in between that is just by knowing z prime and z double prime square we this rai is a function of z one for rai from one z so to map that essentially we need to know a distribution of z okay and we'll have to find out how we can describe a distribution of z so essentially so what the advantage is that is that you see you, you uh, the problem was with reactive scalars handling reactive scalars was that the reactive scalars we could not apply the classical non reacting turbulence modeling strategy 
okay because the a they did not obey sometimes the gradient transfer assumption assumption there have to, is a huge closure problem for the the uh, the mean reaction rate so as soon as you define go to a you basically then you have a take a detour and instead of directly attacking to solve for the mean reactive scalar space that is you instead of so, trying to solve for xi i which creates problems we don't go for that approach okay rather we go for solving for the non reactive scalar or essentially this conserved scalar which is this z prime z tilde that is the favre average z and this one okay and then we map this reactive scalar xi to z using either the 1d flame solution or an equilibrium solution that we obtained or by solving for this we will show both so this is the flamelet approach is it clear to you uh, it's a very beautiful concept see that because xi i poses problems you have problems with closing xi i it does not it does not obey your classical gradient transfer assumption it does not obey your um, uh, closure uh, but the, the reaction rate cannot be closed properly okay and we have to resort to some like ad hoc uh, modeling things like eddy breakup model eddy dissipation concept etc so a more elegant approach is that you go for a scalar okay you go for a conserved scalar which obeys gradient transport assumption and which does not even have a source term what is that scalar that scalar is z mixture fraction okay so then you basically solve for z tilde and then you solve for z prime okay and then you map your reactive scalar onto this z okay now of course you have to do one to one mapping and for that you need only z and z prime is not enough you need to basically find a pdf of z and we'll see that that pdf of z can be formed just by using the knowledge of z averaged that is a favre average z and z prime uh, the variance of z okay so using this you can find essentially the pdf of z and then you can essentially map the reactive scalar into z space one to one and then you can find out the reactive scalar at each point in space okay so that is the beauty of this flamelet model of course it has its own inherent assumptions and uh, you are assuming that it each point is essentially the flamelet behaves as if it is a 1d flame so uh, but that those assumptions can be refined as uh, more and more as we'll see later okay so um, um, uh, that is the thing so the basic most important thing is that you can if you can use a conserved scalar then a lot of problem gets solved uh, problem is essentially elevated because of this uh, uh, site uh, because site stepping this closure problems okay so so we will see that or we will use the models essentially based on the presumed shape uh, pdf approach and that will require the knowledge of favre mean z average and z prime square which we have already obtained and using the gradient transport assumption a hypothesis in the favre average mixture fraction we have obtained this equation here rho bar is essentially if you see rho bar is essentially rho average so they don't make a discrimination between these two okay sometimes we use rho bar as typically we use rho um, uh, typically we use bar for time average and rho bar for ensemble average so here your rho bar is equal to rho uh, angular brackets and of course you have used that d is essentially less than dt okay so the equation of for uh, z prime square uh, is this which we have just obtained and uh, now if you remember if we go back uh, here you see this temperature for the 1d chamber flame or for a bach schumann flame that is a uh, which we we can have might have read in books um, or for the equilibrium solution your temperature is essentially a linear function of z okay so or the enthalpy actually will be a linear function of z so why don't we use this assumption so we can use this assumption essentially to refine out and we can write this as a to establish a relation between enthalpy and z this is very important so we say that h at any point is essentially h2 that is your fuel stream h2 plus sensible this is sensible enthalpy by the way times z plus h1 minus h2 so h at any point is essentially a linear function of z you know h and you know your boundary conditions h1 and h2 okay you find out the h at that point so all you need to know is essentially what is the value of z so similarly we write that the mean value is essentially h2 plus mean z 
times this. This is of course true. This if, if that is true, this is also right. So we can use this. Okay. Of course, however, that if you have a more uh, complicated case that if you have different boundary conditions for z tilde and h tilde, the probability average z and probability average h, you can you may not have to use a different a more generalized formulation for h and there can be heat loss due to radiation or unsteady pressure changes then you cannot use this. So, in that case what you use is that you use a probability average equation of uh, enthalpy like which we have already known like this. And uh, here of course, the spatial variation of pressure is neglected in the small or not 0 this is small Mach number limit okay. and, um, uh, and dp dt uh, pressure uh, averaged uh, uh, time is important for modeling. So, that has been retained for ice engine or diesel engines or for even uh, thermoacoustic instability in gas turbine engines. And the temperature changes due to radiation within the flameless structure also have a strong influence on the prediction of NOx formation. And transport uh, term containing the molecular diffusivity has been neglected and non-unity Lewis number effects are neglected. And no equation we have for, uh, um, uh, for we, uh, we do not use any equation for enthalpy fluctuation because in the non-premise turbulent combustion it is assumed that the fluctuations of enthalpy are due to mixture fraction fluctuations. So, that is the inherent assumption. So, this is just a side step that if you have a complicated situation in which you cannot use this what to do. Okay. But in most cases if you use this, then you can use the presumed shape PDF viewpoint. Okay. So, what we will do is that as I have said that, that H is essentially H2 plus Z times H1 minus H2. So, you need to know, to know H at any point all you need to know is that if these boundary conditions are available, you need to know essentially what is the Z at this point. Okay. But when you have in a, in a, in a RANS or in, a, in an average simulation of course, uh, when you have uh, done uh, this uh, equation of z, all you have essentially solved the equation of z okay, and z prime square. Of course, uh, you must remember that only this solving this equation is not enough, you have to solve for the average equation of u that is a momentum equation, the, uh, the uh, continuity equation also and um, uh, along with the k equation and the epsilon equation also. So, only then uh, you can basically solve uh, have this equation of z prime and z prime squared because you see that uh, those uh, equations you have already obtained uh, this, um, uh, this uh, to get this to, to get this first you need to have mean u prime and mean k prime. So, you can obtain uh, those by the Reynolds average navier stokes equation. Okay. So, but that is of course implied that uh, only solving for z and z prime is not enough. Uh, you have to solve for u prime, uh, u, u, t, uh, u uh, averaged uh, equation and k averaged equation and epsilon averaged equation also. Uh, uh, so, but once you do that you have an you have a essentially a distribution of z and z prime square at each point in the flow. But that is not enough why because enthalpy at each point is essentially a, a, a function of z at each point. So, what you need to do is that using this you need to basically generate all possible values of z. What is that? Essentially that is a PDF of z. Okay. So, what we do is that we essentially assume a shape of PDF exists for a different for a given flow of flow turbulent uh, flow. Okay. So, that is done by this presumed PDF model which is also known as the conserved scalar equilibrium model. We will presume a two parameter PDF in advance which in turn fix the functional form for the PDF of two parameters known in terms of z and z prime. So, we will obtain a PDF okay, something like this z is a PDF of z and this is only a function of z average and z prime square. Okay. So, at each point as soon as you know this by solving all the Rand's equation that is by solving um, okay, that is uh, by, uh, by solving all these equations you obtain uh, this PDF okay, and then you can find out uh, the H. Now, I will just uh, for simplicity I will just tell you the steps. So, first you solve for the continuity equation okay, averaged continuity equation uh, this uh, angular bracket is averaged. You solve for the averaged momentum equation. It might be need to be solved in, uh, in in sync not alone. You solve for the average k equation, you solve for the average epsilon equation okay. and then you solve for the average or the Favre averaged uh, this this string should be Favre averaged or you can essentially solve the, the um, uh, you essentially get these terms essentially here. Okay. 
uh, well, this is just a Fabry average also. So, u v uh, w uh, equation you get and uh, density you get you pressure uh, you get okay. and then you solve for essentially uh, the turbulent kinetic energy using the methods which you have described before. All this you solve and then you solve for this equation z and z prime. Okay. But of course, you see in a, in a real uh, condition you can have numerous of these uh, reactive scalars which you are not solving for. So, the computational uh, load is also reduced. So, you solve for all these things. Okay. So, now after this okay, you have not solved for any of the reactive scalars. So, this not solved these governing equations to be solved. Okay. Uh, governing equations to solve this along with uh, plus constitutive relations. We will solve this. Xi i not solve. Then how to get from this to this? That is the point of the presumed pre pre shape PDF. So, as soon as you solve this, okay. so as soon as you solve this, what you get? You say that at each point in the flow, you know you presume or assume a shape of a PDF of z which is some something can be something like this and the PDF and this is z. And this PDF shape say which is f is given by two parameters z prime and z prime square average. Okay. So, at each point now for each at each point you essentially at each point in the flow essentially have a PDF of z. Okay. And then you since you know that your h is equal to h 2 plus z times h 1 minus h 2 at each point you can find out the value of h given the PDF of this. Okay. And then using this we will show that how you can find out the mean of h how you can find out the mean of xi i which you assume to be a function of which is will be our essentially a function of z. Okay. So, that is the idea. Of this presumed shape PDF approach. So, after you have solved for this z prime and z double prime, you can essentially go to the instantaneous value of z, and from the instantaneous value of z, you go to h, and that is the idea. So, what we typically do is that people to choose a beta function PDF is widely used as z varies as z varies between 0 and 1. So, this is the PDF form that people choose for non premise combustion. So, this p tilde is the Fabre uh, PDF z at, at each point, which is given by this form. This gamma uh, are essentially the gamma function, whereas alpha this is see that this is z to the power mixture z is a mixture fraction to the power of alpha minus 1 times 1 minus z to the power of beta minus 1 times gamma function of alpha plus beta divided by gamma of alpha times gamma of beta. Okay. And whereas this alpha is you see uh, mean z and mean z pr and z prime does not explicitly come, but it comes to here essentially, where alpha is equal to z uh, uh, over z times gamma, whereas beta is equal to 1 minus z f over over z times gamma. Whereas gamma here z prime comes, so z uh, is essentially z um, not z prime z tilde essentially. So, it is z tilde times 1 minus z tilde divided by variance of, uh, uh, of z okay, minus 1 uh, which should be greater than 0. So, essentially it is a function of z tilde and z prime square okay. and this is how the different uh, PDFs of z looks like for different values of z and, uh, and gamma. So, for each point in the flow you essentially assume that there is a PDF um, uh, or, or for the entire flow you assume that this is a, uh, there is a PDF uh, which is given by uh, this, this thing. Okay. And then once you do that okay, um, and these are some of the properties that for large gamma it goes to a Gaussian and alpha less than 1 it has a singularity as z equal to 1 which is going to be taken and for gamma beta greater than 1 it has a singularity as z equal to 1. Okay. But then the thing is that once this PDF is obtained you can get assuming that this xi i by this 1D chamber flame uh, model okay, uh, we, we, you, what we obtain that we, uh, we can f write that xi i is essentially only a function of z. Okay. That because we have essentially we have shown that essentially z behaves like an independent variable. So, using this presumed shape PDF approach the mean of any reactive scalar is essentially a function of z 
as we have shown in the 1D chamber flame calculations and can be calculated as this xi i tilde or this Fabry average xi i at any point x in t is essentially integral 0 to 1 which is the p mean definition of a from a how to obtain a pdf uh, is essentially xi i z times this p tilde z x t times dz. This is an exact equation actually okay. So, there is as long as this is only a function of z. So, mean density also we calculate as something uh, in a similar manner. So, um, you see that uh, the conserved scalar model for uh, non premise combustion is a formula using 1 to 5 and the uh, Bach Schumann or the uh, 1D chambered flame um, mm -hmm. um, chambered flame solution. Okay. So, that is the whole idea. So, now you see that why the 1D chambered flame uh, analysis is so important. Once you have a chambered flame analysis, you can go using you just transform that into mixture fraction space and then you just solve for all this u, u tilde uh, u averaged v averaged uh, density average p average z averaged uh, and uh, z uh, variance of z and you solve for k the turbulent kinetic energy in epsilon and then as soon as you have that you construct this uh, presumed uh, PDF of, uh, of, of z. And then uh, by the assumption of, uh, or that you know as you know as uh, these uh, all the local flames essentially behave typically like a 1D chamber flame uh, and big bad the xi i is a function of xi i is xi z and immediately using that you can find out the model of the averaged value of xi i at each point in flow. Okay, so, without actually solving for xi i just by solving for z and because xi i is a function of z uh, we just can obtain this uh, PDFs of uh, xi i. Okay. So, that is the whole uh, whole point of this thing okay. So, laminar um, uh, so this this will uh, uh, consider uh, take up in the in the next class that uh, there can be alternative methods by which uh, so here we have to the you see the limitation of this method is that here you have to assume that at each point in the flow the 1D chamber flame of this Bachman solution this simplified laminar solution is valid at each point in the flow. So, that is a little bit restricted assumption, but that can be relaxed when you essentially solve for xi i uh, as a function of z explicitly without using resorting to this uh, solution. We can also directly solve for uh, xi i and that will be taken up in the next class. So, till then um, goodbye and see you in the next class again.